Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday, July 23rd. I'm John Weigel here with Ben Berkeley, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. OpenAI's CEO, Sam Altman, recently funded an income study where 3,000 low-income workers were given an extra $1,000 per month. The experiment serves both as a check on the American economy and how low-income individuals would be affected by, oh, I don't know, AI taking over all of their jobs. So yeah, a lot to unpack today. We'll chat about that in a bit, but first, let's give you the hits and headlines today in business and tech. Starting out with the big CrowdStrike news, of course, following last week's outage that affected millions of devices, hackers quickly got to work exploiting that shutdown and sent some customers a malicious file posing as a quick fix to the glitch. But that's not everything. As CrowdStrike works to rebound from the outage, its stock price is doing anything but rebounding. It dropped 13% on Monday following an 11% fall on Friday. Ben, that's a, a big old ouch right there. Yeah, you know, the whole like all press is good press thing. Um, CrowdStrike's really disproving that this week. This press is absolutely bad press. This is going to be the fifth day that they're in the headlines for this. And uh, it feels like it's also just going to continue as there's still some clients that seem to still be feeling the effects of this. And uh, obviously, with uh, bad actors getting the game, it's going to just kind of keep compounding. So, Hope for their sake that they can get back to literally any good story sometime soon. Yeah, I hope so too. And, you know, the shockwaves of this have been felt days later, even today as we're speaking. I'm supposed to take a flight and don't know if it's going to work or not. And it's been quite a few days since the whole shutdown. So, uh, yeah, it's a big problem. Good luck. Thank you. Up next, the EU says Meta may be violating its consumer protection laws when it calls Facebook and Instagram, quote, free, seeing how users must either pay or consent to use of their data. Over to airlines, bad news magnet Boeing got a nice shot in the arm from South Korea's flagship airline Korea Air, which ordered over 40 of the plane manufacturer's biggest jetliners. So Boeing clearly not losing favor in Korea, it looks like. Yeah, that's just like good friendship. Like they're showing support and on tough time. And they're really like checking that box in like a multi-billion dollar way. Like those planes are very expensive. And I'd also note just like from a friendship angle, they're also demanding accountability, which is another good friend thing to do. Because the other wrinkle is that Korean Air, they also ordered the biggest jet from Airbus. And its CEO just suggested that they'll kind of just like build the rest of their fleet based on whichever company safely delivers their order first. So this is like a love triangle situation developing, but probably not a lot of love at the end because someone's going to be out a couple billion dollars. They're really playing this off like a Korean game show. and I'm all for it, honestly. Yeah, I think we need more of that in business. Absolutely. Over to the sweets industry, Krispy Kreme is ditching cookies to double down on donuts. It sold its majority stake in Insomnia Cookies to two private equity firms for $127.4 million. And finally, it turns out people don't like spending a lot of money for dinner. 93% of McDonald's locations voted to extend the chain's $5 value meal offer into August, citing increased traffic. Well, I mean, if they were offering stuff for $5, I mean, it's pretty obvious that the traffic would increase. Yeah, I mean, people are desperate for cheaper options. I will note that I was in the grocery store this weekend and bags of chips were over $6. Yeah. What is that? I've noticed that too recently. The Tostito scoops, what have they done? They're scooping my wallet. I mean, they are also like the peak of technology. Of course. And salsa conveyance. So, you know, you're paying for the science. Um, But like, obviously, if you can get a full meal at just $5, Sounds like a dream. We're going to you know, get a look at McDonald's Q2 numbers next week and uh, probably find out how very good this has been for them. So it feels like a no-brainer you know, extending this deal forward. And also, now that this is resolved, it feels like they can just focus in on like fixing their McFlurry machines, <laughs> which is, should always have been their priority to begin with. But okay, make some cheaper meal. They're always out of order. We need better. Yeah. Those McFlurry machines will never be fixed, um, I, I guarantee. Well, let's put the Tocito scientists on the job, <laughs> and I think you never know. Get the scoop men on it. 
All right, on to the main story today. Sam Altman's income study is over with, and we're finding some interesting results from it. Some are pretty obvious, and some are not so obvious. So, Ben, to start us off here, can you tell us what this study was all about? Yes. So we are looking at the results of this basic income study, which is one of the largest ever run. So it dates back to 2019, and that's when 3,000 people across Texas and Illinois, they started getting this no-strings-attached extra cash. The study you know, spanned urban, suburban, and rural participants. All of them were the low income, earning below $28,000 per year. One-third of those people got $1,000 a month for the entirety of those three years. The remaining 2,000 people in the study you know, they were the control group, so they got $50 per month for these three years. And the bottom line looking at the results now is that it worked. Over and over again, basic income programs work. Like every test has shown they improve outcomes, they increase life flexibility and independence, and they promote spending, but never quite enough. And in this case, yet again, you know, the impact was there just not to this point where it is this magic bullet for poverty or protections against a future economic shift to the machines. Mm -hmm. And if you could break it down for me, right, you have these 1,000 households that received $1,000 a month for about three years. I'm assuming from receiving that $1,000, this study gained access to their finances, bank statements, all of this information to come together with some conclusions. So what did these individuals spend the money on most of the time? I mean, over half of it was on rent. Surprise, surprise. Makes sense. And then kind of cascaded out to just basic needs, bills. There were some investments. There was some giving to others. Really lovely. You know, generally speaking, though, this is about food and housing insecurity, which is always kind of the first places to go in a study like this. Mm -hmm. And that stress definitely decreased in the early going the impact just kind of faded over the remaining two years. It's also two years where costs continue to skyrocket up. So sure. that amount only could do so much. And, you know, it just shows you like in the face of housing costs being so much, just the bills piling up in every other area, it's like food, insurance, car, like all these costs just continue to go up. Sure. Childcare is still up wildly. And so, you know, it's just one of those things where it helped. Mm -hmm. This experiment helped. It just didn't necessarily change everything. Yeah, and it seems like all of these funds were used quite responsibly and just used to buy basic needs, get food, pay rent, pay for housing, pay for childcare, all of those things. Um, I'm even seeing a 20% decrease in problematic drinking as a result of this. And it sounds like just more independence overall when being given this extra money. But as you did say, over time, it seems like that kind of evened out, possibly with inflation, possibly with the fact that it just keeps coming and rent keeps increasing. There are a lot of factors here to talk about, but I think the biggest thing here is why this all matters and kind of what this all has to do with the future of work. And with Sam Altman at the helm of this experiment, it seems there's an easy connection to make there. Oh, you bet. This is the great fear of our time. Almost every study you're going to find on like AI job displacement is going to say, yeah, it's going to be really significant. You know, the amount of people or even whole industries that are going to be purged from the workforce someday will very likely be substantial. The good news in most of the studies is that they say it's going to be rather gradual, which thank goodness, but that timer has already started ticking. Mm -hmm. And I think that you see in this study, you know, one attempt to just get a better sense for like, could this be an answer mm -hmm. for a like workforce that is kind of pushed out and replaced with AI? And, you know, this isn't going to be the answer. There is no one answer. The purpose of the study was not to say, here it is, we've got the answer. Uh, go ahead, machines, go take it all over, we'll be fine. But, you know, I think that there are so many things that are also just really interesting that this isn't something you kind of hear a lot about any sort of giveaway of any kind of, of money is oh it's going to incentivize people to not work that didn't happen mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. a lot of people 
then use this money to pursue a new field or to extend their job search timeline a little bit and hold out for better work. So people are still very much working in this study. And I think that that's something that's also not going to be solved when it comes to AI because people are going to continue to want to work. They're going to be hoping that AI also creates new jobs and that this can just kind of like stabilize them in a very quickly changing world. Yeah. And I mean, when you cut it down to brass tacks, even a thousand dollars a month is not sustainable living, really. You can't live off that, really, especially as like a family household. So, no. I mean, if anything, for this group of 1,000 individuals, it seems like something that helped them get along, help them try something new, get into a new field, or change things up a little bit in their housing environment, which is appreciated. But yeah, as time goes on, we'll have to just see what is able to be done. I mean, you said it very early on in our chat today. It's obvious that when you give people a little more stimulus, a little more money, that their lives get a little better. But I guess now we know this for certain. So what is the answer going forward if they were to lose their jobs? Not sure about that one. And it seems like Sam Altman isn't exactly sure either. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting back to him for just a second. He bought into this $14 million of his own money, which is a drop in the bucket given that he has billionaire starts with a B. But I think that there is a detachment here where this has been pursued in much more of like a Silicon Valley mindset of like, here's this idea. This is going to be a good idea. It's a smart idea. We're going to build these experiments. We're going to show it actually does work. It's still not politically popular. And so, you know, the interesting thing with this is how will this cross over from like Silicon Valley world into the political world going forward? We even mentioned the word political and all of a sudden I'm like, no, I don't know. Nobody knows. (laughs) Anybody's guess. Yeah. We're in this period right now, especially where it's like, nobody knows anything. Mm -hmm. But you know, what we do know, obviously from the study is it's not going to hurt to continue to pursue some form of basic income. And so, you know, I think this study shows us enough positive results that I would expect another big study to follow and probably, you know, increase the dollar amounts or the length and show similarly positive results. But time will only tell. Yes, it will. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email, and we'll see you tomorrow.